A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar Ace Academy. Aspirants, many of you are watching our videos without subscribing to our YouTube channel. So, please subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular updates about our current affairs videos. Now, before getting into discussion, I have two important announcements to you. The first announcement is regarding the Indian Express news analysis. As friends, we have started a new initiative to boost your current affairs preparation. Every Sunday, we will post the video of the Indian Express news analysis and in that particular video, we will cover the important topics from Indian Express in a week and we will provide you as a compilation. This will be beneficial for your current affairs preparation. As friends, do not forget to comment your opinion about this new initiative in the comment section. Also, please give support to our new initiative. Now, coming to the second announcement, the second announcement is regarding prelims test series. Shankar IS Academy's batch 2 of prelims test series is about to begin. The orientation for the first test will be conducted on 15th October 2023 and the first test will be on 22nd October. A total of 40 tests including CSAT and mock tests will be provided in the test series and the test is conducted both in online and offline mode. So, go and register for the test series immediately and boost your prelims score. With these happy announcements, let us get into the daily news analysis. Today, I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspapers dated 8th and 9th of October 2023. Displayed here is a list of news articles that we will be discussing today. At the end of the video, we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So, try to watch the entire video. Now, let us get into our first news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article is taken from yesterday's newspaper. Recently, 10 tigers died in the Mudumalai and Satyamangalam Tiger Reserves and in the Nilgiris Forest Division. So, the National Tiger Conservation Authority conducted an investigation. This article here is based on this investigation only. The investigation highlights the reason for the tiger deaths. Now, we will see the reasons one by one. The first reason is the increase in tiger population. The Western Ghats landscape has around 30% of India's total tiger population. In the last decade, due to conservation efforts of the government, the tiger population has increased in Western Ghats landscape. The population has increased from 382 in 2010 to 828 in 2022. Then in the Mudumalai Tiger Reserve also, the tiger population increased by 123 percentage that is from 51 in 2010 to 114 in 2022. Due to this, naturally the tiger population will spill out. So, the excess tiger population in the Mudumalai Tiger Reserve and Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve are venturing into the Nilgiris Forest Division. Due to this, tigers are going into areas that are moderately occupied by humans. This has resulted in both natural and unnatural deaths of tigers. Also, due to increasing tiger density, there has been infighting among tigers. This has also resulted in death of tigers in some cases. Okay, This is the first reason that is the increase in tiger population. Then the second reason is the decreasing prey population. See generally the young tiger cubs are fed by their mothers. Due to decreasing prey population, the tiger mothers are going longer distances to find prey to feed their cubs. This sometimes has led to abandonment of tiger cubs by their mother. So the cubs are not able to make it on their own. So this resulted in deaths of tiger cubs. See, of the 10 tiger deaths investigated by the National Tiger Conservation Authority, 6 are cubs. Okay. This is the second reason for deaths of tigers, that is the decreasing prey population. Then the last reason highlighted in the report is poisoning by humans. See, of the 10 tigers that died, 2 tigers died due to poisoning. Okay. So, these are all the reasons for tiger deaths according to National Tiger Conservation Authority's investigation. Okay. Now, moving forward, let us cover some important points about tigers from Pullum's perspective. Now, first let us look at the habitat preferred by tigers. See, the tigers prefer diverse habitats. They live in rainforests, grasslands, savannas and even in mangrove swamps. Now, let us see the habitats of different tiger species. Now, first let us take Sumatran tigers. See, Sumatran tigers are adapted to dense tropical rainforest of Indonesia with abundant vegetation. The Sumatran tigers use the cover of the forest 
to stock their prey such as deer and wild boar now let's take royal bengal tigers the royal bengal tigers are adapted to the mangroves of sundarbans and they are also excellent swimmers okay now coming to indo chinese tigers the indo chinese tigers in southeast asia have adapted to grassland ecosystem they use the open environment of grassland ecosystem to hunt a variety of animals now finally the amur or the siberian tigers are adapted to temperate forests of the russian far east these forests experience cold winters and the tigers have adapted to endure sub zero temperatures okay so like i mentioned earlier the tigers have a diverse habitat okay now come to the distribution of tigers around the world now look at this map here as you can see from the map the tigers are found across a wide range of asia from turkey to russian far east and indonesia however due to extensive habitat loss and poaching tiger populations have declined significantly human even successfully pushed three tiger species to extinction that is the caspian tiger javan tiger and bali tiger okay this is all about the distribution of tigers across the world now coming to the distribution of tigers in india see according to 2022 tiger census 3682 tigers are found in india the maximum number of tigers that is 785 are reported to be in madhya pradesh madhya pradesh is followed by karnataka with 563 tigers then uttarakhand with 560 tigers and finally maharashtra with 444 tigers okay then there is so with maximum number of tigers were at the corbett national park in uttarakhand which reported 260 animals it is followed by bandipur with 150 animals and naharhol with 141 animals note that both bandipur and naharhol are located in karnataka a point to note here is that nearly a quarter of the tigers were reportedly outside protected areas okay this is all about the distribution of tigers in india now we will see the threats faced by tigers the first major threat is habitat loss habitat loss occurs due to deforestation agricultural expansion and infrastructure development this led to reduction in tiger population the second major threat is poaching see tiger body parts are mainly used in traditional chinese medicine as there is huge market for tiger body parts in china tigers are poached in india then the third reason is the issue of human animal conflict on one hand humans are encroaching the forest land for various activities and on the other hand as we saw in the news article as the tiger population is increasing they are venturing into new areas this has resulted in human tiger conflict see human tiger conflict has been detrimental to both humans and tigers at least 108 people were killed in tiger attacks in india between 2019 and mid 2021 also erecting electric fences and poisoning as retaliation by humans has also resulted in deaths of tigers okay and lastly there is the issue of climate change due to climate change there have been instances of extended drought this has resulted in reducing green cover in the forest due to this prey population has been declining this in turn has resulted in reduction in tiger population okay these are all the threats faced by tigers now having seen the threats let us see the conservation efforts taken by our government the first major step was project tiger it was launched in 1973 see the project tiger was one of the most significant efforts to conserve tigers through this the government established protected areas specifically for tigers and their prey the project also aimed to stop poaching and habitat destruction okay this is the first step then the second one is national tiger conservation authority it is responsible for formulating plans and programs for conservation of tigers in india the authority also oversees the implementation of project tiger okay this is the second important step then the third one is the wildlife crime control bureau this bureau enforces the wildlife protection act and other relevant laws to protect tiger and other animal species the bureau collaborates with various enforcement agencies such as police customs and border control organizations to prevent wildlife crime okay fourthly the wildlife institute of india and the national tiger conservation authority conduct a periodic tiger census every 4 years this also helps in conservation of tigers and finally the government has placed the tiger in schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 2019 
nineteen seventy two, which offers maximum protection to the tigers. Also know that tiger is placed under appendix one of sites, and it is an endangered species as per IUCN's red list of threatened species. Okay, so these are all some of the conservation efforts taken by the government. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the reasons for recent deaths of tigers. Then we saw about the habitat and distribution of tigers. Then we saw about the threats faced by tigers. And finally, we saw some points about the conservation efforts taken by the government to protect tigers. Now, with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this editorial article. This article talks about caste-based census. See, recently the Bihar government has released a caste survey data. This has sparked the discussions regarding caste census. See, already the census of India is publishing the data on scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, but there were no data for the population of other backward classes and the other caste groups. So, in order to gather the data on all caste groups, the Bihar government has recently conducted the caste-based census and it released the data. So, this article here is written based on this context only. See, the content of this article is not. that much important for our exam so we will keep this article as a base and we will analyze the advantages and disadvantages of caste census as usual we will approach this topic with mains answer writing come interactive approach now before getting into discussion let us look into the syllabus in prelims this topic will come under economic and social development inclusion demographics and in mains it comes under gs paper 1 under the topics of salient features of indian society diversity of india and population and associated issues okay this is all about the syllabus now first we look at the question the question here is critically examine the reason behind conducting a caste based census in india considering its potential impacts on policy formulation and social equity 150 words 15 marks now let's understand the question here the keyword is critically examine it means the question wants us to provide in depth analysis of conducting a caste based census since the word critically is given we must write both significance and challenges for caste based census and we also need to suggest suitable measures to overcome those challenges so finally we have to end the answer with a balanced conclusion okay now coming to the question the question is about caste based census right so in the introduction part you have to write what is caste based census If you are having any data and reports regarding this caste based census you can mention them and the main body of the answer can be split into two parts in the first part you can write some points regarding significance of caste based census and in the second part you need to write some challenges for caste based census and finally in the conclusion part you can provide some suggestions to address the challenges or you can provide way forward okay this is how you have to approach this question okay Now let's start with introduction. See here the question is about caste based census. So in the introduction we can write what is caste census and what is the need for conducting caste census. Here the introduction can be like a caste census is a survey done by the government to find out information about different groups of people based on their castes. It helps the government to understand where certain caste groups are living and how they are doing in terms of employment, education and other things. okay so the information from the caste based census can be used to make policies and programs to help the marginalized and vulnerable population okay so you can write a simple introduction like this now coming to the body of the answer see in the first part we should write the significance of caste census here we will write the benefits of conducting caste census one by one here some five to six benefits are enough for this answer okay now we'll see the benefits or significance of caste based census one by one firstly the caste census will help to address historical injustices see a caste census can help to identify and document the socio economic conditions of various caste groups especially those who are historically marginalized and disadvantaged so a caste census will bring marginalized and disadvantaged people to the forefront of development and policy making okay this is the first benefit Secondly the caste census will lead to targeted development with accurate caste based data policy makers can formulate and implement targeted development programs this will lead to uplifting of underprivileged communities related to education employment healthcare and social welfare okay this is the second benefit 
Thirdly, the caste-based census is useful for affirmative action. Caste-based data is crucial for the effective implementation of affirmative action policies such as reservations in education and public employment. Caste data ensures that benefits reach those who need them the most based on their socio-economic status. Okay, this is the third benefit. Then the fourth important benefit is resource allocation. See the data from caste census can guide the equitable allocation of resources to regions and communities that have been historically neglected. This will include both financial and infrastructure development. Okay, this is the fourth benefit. Fifthly, the caste census will promote social inclusion. See, a caste census can promote social inclusion by recognizing and acknowledging the socio-economic conditions of various caste groups. Caste data empowers marginalized communities by highlighting their needs and providing representation in decision-making process. Okay, this is the fifth benefit. And lastly, the caste census will lead to data-driven policies. Policy making based on caste data is more informed and evidence-based. So this will lead to more efficient resource utilization and program implementation. Okay. So these are all some of the important significance of conducting caste-based census. And these are also the benefits in conducting caste-based census. So it is enough for you to write these five to six points in your answer. Okay. Now moving on to the second part of body of the answer. As we saw earlier, the question asks us to critically examine the topic. So you have to provide the challenges of caste-based census. These challenges are also the disadvantages of caste-based census. Here we will cover some 4 to 5 important challenges or difficulties in conducting caste census. The first important challenge is privacy concerns. See, collecting caste-based data raises privacy concerns as individuals may refuse to disclose their caste identity. So, ensuring data privacy and addressing these concerns is a significant challenge in caste census. Then the second challenge is the complexity of caste system. See, India's caste system is intricate and multifaceted with numerous subcastes and communities. So accurately categorizing and recording these diverse groups can be a challenging process. Okay. Then the third important challenge is identification issues. Determining an individual's caste can be difficult. This is especially in cases of inter-caste marriages. Sometimes an individual may identify with multiple castes and it might be difficult to record the data okay this poses challenges in data accuracy okay this is the third important challenge then the fourth challenge is political sensitivities see caste related data can be politically sensitive and it can lead to political debate and controversy apart from this there is also a risk of caste data being misused for political or divisive purposes so this leads to tensions or conflicts among different caste groups okay and the last challenge is stigmatization. See, publicly available caste data could stigmatize individuals and communities which affects their social interactions and opportunities. It may reinforce caste divisions and promote identity politics which potentially lead to social tensions. Okay, So these are all some of the important challenges associated with caste-based census in India. And these are also the disadvantages in carrying out caste-based census. Okay. So it is enough for you to write these five points and there is a keyword critically analyze. Okay. Now coming to the conclusion part, here we can provide some suggestions as way forward. The conclusion can be like, government must engage in open and inclusive discussions with various stakeholders including political parties, community leaders and civil society organizations. This will create consensus on the need for a caste census. In addition to this, there must be an ethical framework that addresses concerns related to privacy, data security and potential misuse of caste related data. Also, the government must ensure that the census is conducted with the utmost sensitivity and respect for individual choices. Okay. Apart from this, there must be comprehensive awareness campaign to inform citizens about the need for the caste census. Here people must be made aware about the importance of caste census for policy formulation and empowerment. Okay. So these are all some of the suggestions that you can provide in the conclusion part. Okay. And that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion through mains answer writing come interactive approach. We saw about the advantages and disadvantages of caste based census. Okay. This topic is very much important for your mains exam. So revise all the facts that we discussed. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article is taken from yesterday's newspaper. 
This news article talks about a recent report by scientists and researchers regarding Ganges River dolphins. The report was titled as Rescuing Ganges River Dolphins. The report says that 19 Gangetic river dolphins were rescued from irrigation canals in the Ganga Gagra basin of Uttar Pradesh between 2013 and 2020. Apart from this, the report also talks about behavioral and demographic information about Gangetic river dolphins. Okay, this is all about the news. Now in this discussion, let us learn about Gangetic river dolphins from exam perspective. Now let us start with basic information about Gangetic dolphin. See the Gangetic river dolphin was officially discovered in 1801. The scientific name of Gangetic river dolphin is Platanista gangetica. They are also called as Susu in local language. See Gangetic dolphins are important aquatic species as they are a reliable indicator of the health of the entire Ganges river ecosystem. Note that the global population of Gangetic dolphin is estimated at 4000 and nearly 80% of gangetic river dolphin is found in indian subcontinent okay now talking about their habitat the gangetic river dolphin can only live in fresh water and they are generally blind since they are blind they catch their prey in a unique manner by using an ultrasonic sound okay now coming to the distribution earlier the gangetic river dolphin were spotted in the ganges brahmaputra meghna river system and in karnapuli sangu river systems they were originally distributed in the countries like nepal india and bangladesh however at present the species is extinct from a major part of its yearly distribution ranges now it is primarily found in the ganges brahmaputra and their tributaries okay see the current distribution range of gangetic dolphins in india covers seven states namely assam uttar pradesh madhya pradesh rajasthan bihar jharkhand and west bengal okay This is all about the distribution. Now moving on to see about the protection status of Gangetic River dolphins. See the Gangetic dolphins are protected under Schedule One of the Wildlife Protection Act, 1972, and they are listed as endangered in the IUCN's Red List of Threatened Species. Apart from this, the Gangetic River dolphins are also listed under Appendix One of the CITES. Okay. Now finally, let us see the threats for Gangetic River dolphin. See the industrial and agricultural pollution are serious threat to gangetic dolphins. Also note that more gangetic dolphins are dying as a result of bycatch. Here bycatch means accidentally getting caught in fishing nets. And another important threat is habitat fragmentation. See due to the construction of more than 50 dams and other irrigation related projects, the gangetic dolphins are divided into isolated groups. See the dams disturb the migration, breeding cycles and habitat of gangetic dolphins. Okay. So this is one of the threats faced by gangetic dolphins. Apart from this, the gangetic dolphins are also hunted for meat and oil for medicinal purposes. Okay. So illegal hunting is also posing a serious threat to gangetic river dolphin. Okay. Now finally let us see the conservation efforts by the government. Firstly, the central government has launched the conservation action plan for the Gangetic dolphin in 2010 this plan was aimed to protect endangered gangetic dolphin species secondly the government has launched project dolphin in 2019 under this project the government aims to conserve the dolphins and their aquatic habitat by using modern technology and anti poaching activities the project dolphin engages the fishermen and river dependent population in conservation measures of gangetic dolphins okay also note that the government has established ganges dolphin sanctuary in vikramashila in bihar to conserve gangetic river dolphins okay these are all some of the conservation efforts taken by the government to protect gangetic river dolphin from extinction okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw the basics about gangetic river dolphins then about the distribution and habitat of gangetic river dolphins then we saw about the threats faced by gangetic river dolphins and finally we saw some points about the protection status and conservation efforts of gangetic river dolphins okay see this topic is very much important for your prelims exam so make note of each and every points that we discussed with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article according to the news article there was an avalanche on tibet's mount shishapangma mount shishapangma is the 14th highest mountain in the world it is located in south central tibet and it is situated 5 kilometers from the border with nepal 
also note that mount shishapangma is located entirely within china okay this is all about the news now in this context let us see a few points about avalanche see avalanche is a rapid and destructive flow of snow ice and debris down a mountain side or slope see in case of an avalanche snow and ice becomes unstable and they starts moving downhill under the influence of gravity so to put it simply avalanche is a rapid flow of snow ice or other debris down a slope under the influence of gravity okay now what are the causes of avalanche see to know about the causes of avalanche we must first familiarize ourselves with the term snow pack here a snow pack refers to the accumulated layers of snow that have settled and compacted over time on the ground see the depth of the snow pack varies depending on the location time of year and climate conditions in mountainous regions with heavy snowfall the snow pack can become several meters deep during the winter the snow pack typically becomes denser and more compacted with depth with increase in density the stability of snow pack increases okay having understood the basics about snow pack let us now look at the cause of avalanche the first cause is instability in the snow pack see weak layers within the snow pack can fail under pressure due to this the snow started moving downhill under the influence of gravity which leads to avalanche okay then the second cause is climate change due to climate change mountains all over the world are experiencing a period of heavy snowfall followed by a period of high temperature due to this there are huge fluctuations in the snow pack and it leads to instability of snow pack this instability in turn causes an avalanche okay then the third reason is topography of the region see the topography of the region also influences avalanches normally mountains with steep slopes are more prone to avalanches and finally the avalanches can also be caused by anthropogenic factors activities such as skiing snowboarding snowmobiling and hiking can trigger avalanches when people disturb the snow pack okay so these are the causes of avalanches now having seen the causes now let us see the types of avalanches the first one is the loose snow avalanches these occur when a relatively small amount of unconsolidated snow detaches from the slope and cascades downhill they are typically less dangerous then the second one is wet avalanches these occur when warmer temperatures or rain saturate the snow pack see the water saturated snow pack becomes heavy and unstable this results in avalanches see wet avalanches are more common in the spring season in some cases they are extremely destructive due to their high water content and the last one is slab avalanches see slab avalanches are the most common and often the most dangerous type in this type a slab of snow breaks away from the underlying layers and it slides downhill as a single unit okay so these are the three most common types of avalanches and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion is all about what is avalanche then we saw about the causes of avalanches and finally we saw some points about the types of avalanches now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this article is taken from yesterday's newspaper see last saturday the hamas a militant group living in the gaza strip fired thousands of rockets over israel this resulted in hundreds of deaths and collapse of several buildings in israel in response to this attack the israel conducted retaliatory air strikes over the gaza territory this resulted in the damages of lives and infrastructure in gaza okay this is the crux of the news article now in this context let us understand some points about the hamas group and about the history of israel palestine conflict in detail now first let us see some points about hamas group first of all know that hamas is an arabic word which literally means islamic resistance movement the hamas group was originated in 1988 after the beginning of palestinian resistance against israel currently the hamas are residing in gaza strip see the main objective of hamas is to carry out an armed struggle against israel to liberate palestine apart from this they also aims to deliver social welfare programs to the palestinian arab people note that till 2005 the hamas are only involved in militant activities but after 2005 hamas engaged in the palestinian politics 
they won the legislative elections in Gaza in 2006 and since then they are ruling Gaza Strip. Even though the Hamas entered the politics, it is designated as a terrorist group by Israel, the United States, European Union and United Kingdom etc. Okay, this is all about the Hamas. Now let us see the history of Israel-Palestine conflicts. See, to have a better understanding, we first look at the map of Israel and Palestine. Now look at this map here. See, the Palestine is composed of the areas of West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Here the West Bank is situated between Israel and Jordan. It is ruled by the Palestinian National Authority or Fatah, which was formed by Yasser Arafat. And the Gaza Strip is located between Israel and Egypt. See, Israel occupied the Gaza Strip in 1967, but it had withdrawn its army in 2005. So currently, the Hamas militant group is ruling the area since 2006 as they won assembly elections. Okay, now how these territories came into existence? See, the territories of Israel and Palestine are divided due to several wars and UN resolutions. See, 1947, the United Nations adopted a resolution numbered 181. This resolution is known as Partition Plan. This plan divided the erstwhile Palestine into Arab and Jewish states. Due to this resolution, the state of Israel was created on May 14, 1948. But this creation was opposed by the surrounding Arab states, and this led to the first Arab-Israeli war in 1948. See, Israel won this war, and the territory was divided into three parts, such as the state of Israel, the West Bank. which is situated west of the Jordan River on the Gaza Strip okay and after several years the second arab israeli war was started in 1967 this war is also called as six days war as it was fought for six days in this second arab israeli war the israel occupied east jerusalem west bank most of the golan heights of syria gaza and the sinai peninsula of egypt okay and there was also another one war named the yom kippur war It was broken out in 1973 when Syria and Egypt launched air strikes against Israel. This war was started on the Jewish holy day of Yom Kippur, so that the war was termed as Yom Kippur War. See, the war was stopped after two weeks by the UN resolution, and later on, Israel left Sinai Peninsula, Gaza, and some parts of Western Bank due to peace efforts. So, as of now, the Israel is having a control over some parts of West Bank. Golan Heights and its own territory. Okay, this is all about the territories. Now coming to Israel-Palestine conflict. See, 1961, Palestinian Liberation Organization, that is the PLO, was formed to fight for the liberation of Palestine. As we saw just now, some parts of the West Bank, that is the Palestinian territory, is occupied by Israel. So the main aim of Palestinian Liberation Organization is to liberate Palestine through armed struggle. Its prominent leader was. Yasser Arafat apart from Palestinian Liberation Organization the Hamas group are struggling from the Gaza strip to aid Palestinian liberation okay having seen the basics now let us see about the uprisings of Palestinians against Israel note that the uprisings are famously called intifada first Palestinian intifada in 1987 there was an uprising in Palestine it was against the Israeli occupation of Palestinian territories such as Gaza and the West Bank In this uprising, hundreds of people were killed. This intifada came to an end with the signing of Oslo Peace Accords in 1993. The accords were signed between the then Israeli Prime Minister Rabin and the leader of Palestinian Liberation Organization Yasser Arafat. After this accord, the Palestinian Authority was formed and it took over the control of some territories of West Bank. Later, the Israeli army withdrew from parts of the Western Bank in 1997. due to the Oslo peace accords however the hamas organization refused this peace accord so the hamas even started fighting against palestinian liberation organization itself so the oslo accords could not bring permanent peace to the region and later the second palestinian intifada was launched in 2000 now let us see some points about second palestinian intifada the second intifada was started as a result of israeli politicians visit to the Al Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The rebellion was widespread and the violence had lasted for years. A ceasefire was finally announced as a result of Israel's promise to withdraw its all troops and Jewish settlements from the Gaza Strip by 2005 end. And Israel also left the Gaza Strip 
in 2005 by keeping the promise however the hamas group did not end their struggle they are still struggling to liberate palestine fully and this led to the third palestinian intifada see the recent air strikes by hamas and the subsequent war is often called as the third palestinian intifada okay and that's all regarding this discussion with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article according to the news article the ministry of social justice and empowerment is going to construct two hostels in osmania university under the pradhan mantri ansuchit jadi abhyuday yojana that is under the pm ajay scheme this is all about the news now in our discussion today we will understand some points about pm ajay scheme see pradhan mantri ansuchit jadi abhyuday yojana that is the pm ajay is a centrally sponsored scheme this means that the funds for the scheme are shared between the center and the states note that the pm ajay scheme comes under the ministry of social justice and empowerment okay this is a basic points about the scheme now coming to the objectives of the scheme firstly the pm ajay scheme aims to reduce poverty of the scheduled caste communities secondly the scheme aims to improve the socio economic developmental indicators of scheduled caste community and finally the pm ajay scheme aims to increase literacy and it encourages enrollment of scheduled castes in schools and higher educational institutions okay see to achieve these wider objectives the government is currently taking several steps now we will see the steps one by one firstly to reduce poverty of the sc communities the government is taking steps to enhance employment opportunities by providing skill development and through income generation schemes secondly to improve the socio economic developmental indicators of sc communities the government is providing adequate infrastructure facilities to sc dominated villages and finally to increase literacy and to encourage enrollment of scheduled castes in schools and higher education institutions the government is constructing various residential schools in addition to this the government is also constructing quality residential facilities in higher educational institutions okay so these are all some of the objectives and mode of action under the scheme now coming to the implementation areas currently 28 states and union territories are covered under the scheme and note that the states like arunachal pradesh nagaland meghalaya and mizoram and union territories like andaman nicobar islands dadra nagar haveli daman and dayu lakshadweep and ladakh are not covered under the scheme okay this is all about the implementation areas now finally let us look at the eligibility criteria of pm ajay scheme see the scheduled caste persons living below the poverty lines are eligible for getting benefits under various income generating schemes and skill development programs under the pm ajay scheme see in case of infrastructure development the villages having 50% or more sc population are eligible for grants under the pm ajay scheme okay and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about pm ajay scheme that is the pradhan mantri anusuchit jadi abhyuday yojana then we saw about the objectives of pm ajay scheme then we saw about the mode of action of the scheme and finally we saw some points about the implementation and eligibility criteria of the scheme okay now with these points in mind let us move on to the next part of the video that is to discuss preliminary practice questions as parents today we are having four questions i will solve three of them and one will be a quiz question for you look at the first question this question is regarding pradhan mantri anusuchit jadi abhyuday yojana that is pm ajay here three statements are given you have to find how many of the statements are correct look at the first statement it is a centrally sponsored scheme under ministry of social justice and empowerment see this statement is correct as we saw in the discussion pm ajay scheme is a centrally sponsored scheme comes under the ministry of social justice and empowerment so first statement is correct now coming to the second statement currently all the states and union territories are covered under the scheme except jammu and kashmir see this statement is incorrect as we saw in the discussion the states like arunachal pradesh nagaland meghalaya and mizoram and union territories like andaman nicobar islands dadra nagar haveli daman and dayu ladakh and lakshadweep are not covered under pm ajay scheme so second statement is incorrect now coming to the third statement the main objective of the scheme is to increase the living standard of sc community by way of various income generating schemes skill development and infrastructure development so this is the overall objective of the scheme so third statement is correct here only second statement is incorrect 
and the rest of the two statements are correct so the correct answer for the question is option b only two moving on let's take up the second question i will read the question first in this river dolphin one of the world's rarest aquatic dolphins can be seen in which of the following rivers in india option a brahmaputra option b ganges option c bs option d jhelum here the correct answer is option c bs see the indus river dolphin are seen in bs river which is one of the tributaries of indus moving on let's take up the third question this is a pair based question on one side mountain peaks are given and on the other side the states are given we have to find how many of the pairs are correctly matched first pair kanjunjunga sikkim second pair nanda devi himachal pradesh third pair mulayanagiri karnataka fourth pair agastyamala kerala see here first and third pair are correctly matched kanjunjunga is located in sikkim and the mulayanagiri is located in karnataka and note that nanda devi is located in uttarakhand and not in himachal pradesh then agastyamala is located in tamil nadu and not in kerala here only two pairs are correctly matched so the correct answer for the question is option b only two displayed here is a quiz question for you today i will post this quiz question in a community section try to answer it and displayed here is a mains question for your practice go through the question write your answer and post it in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the video if you found our video to be useful do like comment and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe shankarais academy youtube channel thank you for listening